and welcome to another episode of What the Fluff, where we talk about stories that make you go, What the Fluff? <laughs> so I'm Fluffy O'Panda. And I'm Tam for this episode. Nothing exciting today? No, not today. The color is enough. Okay. Sparkly. <laughs> Tam sparkly color. It sounds like a really old MSN handle. <laughs> So, what what the fluff story do you have for us today, Tam Sparkly Collar? Well, sixty nine. I don't know. Sixty. <laughs> you know those Emerson handles always had numbers. Of sure, there are so many numbers, and that's the one you picked. <laughs> we we're just talking about genitals. I'm sorry. <laughs> so on the weekend, mm-hmm. on this past Saturday, what was that? I don't remember dates. Dates don't really matter. Dates, dates, dates. They're all just man-made. Things. I went to Witchfest. Please explain which what Witchfest is. Is a alternative music festival, one day alternative music festival, uh, organized by Witch Doctor Productions. It was originally only in Joburg, and it was designed to be like a three-day camping festival. But those kind of festivals, as we know, are incredibly expensive. Mm-hmm. So what they did this year is they had a one-day festival, one in Joburg and one in Cape Town. And so I went kind of like how to the one in Cape Town. Did it a couple of years back where they only had one day? Yeah, the, yeah, and a lot of or people one night were. In Cape Town. Yeah, a lot of people were upset about that one, but that was because Ramfest was a camping festival first. Mm. So. Well, I mean, the following year was then camping, and yeah. the following year was then camping, camping, and then the following year was postponed forever. And then it died. <laughs> so it was amazing. I loved it. It was great. But the only thing that I kind of have about it, besides the fact that I'm still broken from it, that's why I'm wearing the collar to keep my head up, um, is, I don't know if you've seen this before, which I'm sure you have, is kind of the attitude sometimes of the international bands and that sometimes the local bands are actually better than the international ones. So if you went to Wishfest, if you know about it, then you'll know which international bands I'm talking about. But I'm not going to say them here. But just the local bands seem to want to be there more and we're more interactive with the crowd, especially um, Borgasm, which was great. Oh, I love They that. were fantastic. They were awesome. Uh, and Infanteria was awesome as well. Oh, but Infanteria is always amazing. Um, so and I mean there are tons and tons of other bands that with it. Devil Speak, check them out. <laughs> but when it got to the international bands, I don't know if the audience was just tired by that point because there were so many bands on the bill to watch. Literally, the turnover between bands was amazing. Like the crew that they had was insane. Like so, did it start off as like local, 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 and then when it got to nighttime, it was an international? Yeah. Yeah, no, people were tired. So, but then also the international band, just their attitude uh, of one of the bands in particular was kind of like, they basically said to the crowd that we don't do encores. And if you ask us for an encore, we're just going to walk off the stage. And I was like, what? okay, excuse me. Like, wasn't gonna, but. Who do you think you are? You know? <laughs> I mean, as my boyfriend said, it's like, you don't even have to plan an encore. You can literally just cut your set one song short and then go off and then come back on again. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. So that kind of just made me go like, what the fluff? What? But why would you, why would that be a thing though? Like, I don't understand. Because there's been many a time where we've gone to go watch international bands and we've screamed for an encore, knowing full well that the lights are still on, that they're going to come back, they do one song, they leave, we spend 10 minutes screaming for more, and then they don't come back because they only allocated one song. They're done. They're done. But you still got that encore. You still got that audience participation where the band is now hyped you up so much, you know, that you're just screaming for more. And you got that little bit of more, and then that was it, done, you know? Got yeah, your money so worth. I don't understand where that attitude came from. It really just made you seem like you were there to play, and that was it, that was your job, and when your job was done, you left. It's like, if you really didn't want to do that, you didn't have to come. <laughs> like, Well, I've never, ever experienced that with international bands, and as you know, you and I have seen 
a few. There was one year at a Ram Fest where the band that we went to see, why we bought the tickets that we went to see, uh, I think the lead singer was actually sick. Maybe that's why they just kind of like went on, did their set, left. But mm. they're a pretty well-known international band and a lot of people came to see them. But then the band after them literally had like three encores or something. And they just gave so much to the audience. And like, I'm not asking bands to now, you know, high five everybody and, you know, give autographs to everybody and hang out afterwards. No, no, you have to be careful about this kind of thing because otherwise musicians everywhere are going to be like, you don't understand. Like, that's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking is when it seems like it's just a mission for you to be there it shows it really shows if you don't want to be on stage if you don't want to be there it really does show and that's why i'm saying like the the local bands you could see that they were having a really good time Mm. and the audience was really sort of interacting with them and things like that and but the reason was is that i'm assuming a lot of people bought the tickets because of who was headlining yeah you know so i mean you're tired by the time they come around but as you know we've been to these three day long festivals Mm -hmm. and for some reason you can like dredge up this energy from somewhere when you know a good band comes on with our powers combined you know we shall save the planet (laughs) (laughs) so that was my kind of thing of like really really it just seems like a very unnecessary thing to say like out loud he didn't even have to say that he didn't have to say it at all and then people would have been fine with it you know, but now because you said I'm not going to do it, then, you know, people are like, well, fuck you. <laughs> well, speaking of fuck yous, my personal what the fluff today is something that is making me go, has made me go, sorry, English, uh, WTF for weeks now, probably even months at this point. But it's the whole pineapple pizza debate. Yeah, that I'm not getting. I'm like... Who if, cares? If you don't like the pineapple, keep it off the pizza. I know some people are allergic. Yeah, but... Then don't eat it. And if you like pineapple on your pizza, then eat it. I personally like it. I'll eat it if it's on there. If it's yeah, not, yeah. I'm not going to try and find some. Ooh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> so, I promise I'm not phoning it in. Um, so, this whole pineapple pizza debate has, has had me befuddled um for so long because you know in my opinion there are other things that should not be put on pizza like for example there's a local restaurant here local franchise that has a breakfast pizza which has egg and bacon on a pizza for me that that doesn't that's not pizza that's an abomination (laughs) but you know if you want to eat it eat it free choice all that jazz i also don't understand why people put seafood on pizza because then you can't eat it cold the next morning You'll oh. die. <laughs> so Gordon Ramsay, the Gordon Ramsay, has apparently put an end to this debate. The chef hath spoken is the tagline for this article, which I thought was quite cute. So basically, he was doing a talk show called The Nightly Show. He was hosting it, and he was ordering pizza for every- for him and everyone in the audience. And he was asking, what does everybody want? And one person said, pineapple. To which Ramsay, that's his name, said you don't put fucking pineapple on pizza and then he went what the fuck are you doing (laughs) that has apparently brought the pizza debate to a close for 2017 and i just kind of feel like who what why like why is this such a thing that it made headline news for a major english newspaper it was like the dress of last year Mm. early last year Year before. Year before, where people are like, is it blue? Is it gold? Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people did. But a lot of people did. I'm like, it's blue, okay? But apparently, that actually had like a whole science thing behind it as to why certain people saw different things for that dress. Yeah, that part was interesting. But, you know, people. For about like, two seconds. CEO's you know. awake. <laughs> now, CEO's out again. <laughs> if you go onto our Instagram, uh, which is at what the fluff underscore show, you will see what we mean by the CEO. Um, she's working so hard today. We're so proud. So I personally don't mind it. Like if somebody hands me a slice of pizza and it's got pineapple on it, I'm not going to pick it off. I'm going to eat it. But also like I don't 
give a sock if like I'm offering you pizza and it has something on it and you then pick it off like that's fine don't care <laughs> you know like I personally love banana on my pizza don't like it see but it's not gonna cause this ginormous rift where people are now gonna do like little cartoons and things show is cancelled <laughs> it's over it's done done over the banana on the pizza debate because people are like you can't have fruit you can't put fruit on a pizza and i'm like what do you think Watch tomatoes me. are? <laughs> you know that tomato base that you put on that pizza what is a tomato exactly it's a fruit ladies and gentlemen so yeah so that was my personal what the fluff but another thing that made me go not even what the fluff it literally made me go what the fuck like as i read the title yeah they've invented a car for women so what have I been driving this whole time? <laughs> Apparent, I, I don't understand. I just, when okay, I read... Okay, what, what are the features of this particular car that are specific to women? Okay, but let me just explain. Okay, okay. go ahead. Cosmopolitan, you know that great woman's literature? Yes, that, mm. that beacon mm-hmm. of, of journalistic truth. All about, uh, you know, sex tips and lip gloss. Um, Remember when the sex section was sealed? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was going to say something, but my parents are probably going to watch this, so never mind. Sorry, parents. So what's um, in the car? So Cosmopolitan and Seat, right? You know that car brand that has the funky little S on the, yeah, on the grill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've created a car specifically for women, which has taken them two years to develop. That quickly? Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Because, you know, women are never satisfied. <laughs> it's called the Me Car, M double I. Yeah, Me Car. And it is supposed to accommodate all your feminine needs. So it features a handbag hook, lights designed to appear as though your car is wearing eyeliner. Oh my. It also has a cosmopolitan, as this uh, journalist has written, tramp stamp. So it's on the back of the car, it says cosmopolitan. And a panoramic sunroof designed to help you tan. So, so that you can get skin cancer while you're driving. So that has Great. clearly met all my needs as a woman. Like that's Are those the everything. only yep. features yep. that are different mm-hmm. to a normal car so cosmopolitan said that they want something that's agile and easy to park and drive parking is not that hard but they also want a car that looks stylish and cool and suits their personality it comes in candy white and purple with extra mirrors if i want something sexy then i'm gonna give myself an audi Ooh. like not a panda candy <laughs> what the hell that is I'm now going to invent a car um, called Panda Candy. Panda Candy. But they've basically just made a purple sparkly car and said that it's for women. But I don't understand this need to dis- to differentiate between what car is for who. Because for years I've had people go, oh, that's a woman's car. That's a girl's car. What does that even mean? I suppose it's, you know, women mainly buy that kind of car, but... That doesn't really hold any truth with me because my mom will drive like little hatchback or like a double cab bucky. It really doesn't matter. I just, uh, it, uh. just. I mean, she's so flustered. Her septum ring is skew. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but what I wanted to mention, which I thought was absolutely hilarious in this article, was that this uh, journalist was just like, "Where's my tampon dispenser?" <laughs> Because that's really what a woman needs <laughs> in her specifically designed Could car. Could you have it, like, maybe behind the sunshade? So, oh, <laughs> that would be hilarious. You say, like, your boyfriend has to park the car or something when he's going to the shop. He it down, just jam on it. <laughs> just raining down. Of various, you know, densities and sizes because, you know... Women are. Oh, you know, it's like here on the, the center console. <laughs> and he's like trying to like put the volume up or change the station, pushes the wrong button. And <laughs> Damn, everywhere. Because that's what funny if you could get like pads and panty liners in there as well. 
No, that would be in a different section. <laughs> Can you imagine the look of this from the outside? <laughs> if somebody's walking past the car, then there's this guy just like, <laughs> Elf! Pressed up against the window, just being like, like ah! I can't get out, but I'm getting a tan. <laughs> and then the eyeliner just turns on and off because he's trying to... <laughs> Yeah, Cosmo, that's what we think of your sparkly purple car. <laughs> it's going to be a hit. <laughs> well done. So, Jam, do you have any other... I do have one more that kind of made me go, what the the, the fluff? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or it's kind of like, more like what the... Because uh! <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed this phenomenon, what's happening to us. That seems to be our word of the season. Phenomenon? Phenomenon. Phenomenon. So basically, when you're a kid, you can't wait to be an adult, right? Because you could do anything that you want, apparently. I still can't wait to be an old lady. Because then I can I tell people that's what gonna to do. Be, that's then... going to be really, really fun. Because mm. you can have, like, pink hair. Anyway, I digress. But you already had pink hair. Oh, I've had all the colors. She's just going to go, like, dark brown when she's an old lady. <laughs> so... When you're a kid, you want to grow up to be an adult, right? right? And being a kid, it's a very sort of short space of time where a lot of things change. So you're uh-huh. a kid and then you're a preteen and you're a teenager and then you mm-hmm. get to your 20s and you're an adult, apparently. So a you're lot a of stuff... You're an adult and then you're an adult yeah. and then you're middle-aged. And so a lot of things happen in a very short space of time. <laughs> and then you think when you're an adult, it just sort of like plateaus. Uh-huh. uh-huh. That's what you think. Right? Uh-huh. And then you're just boring and old forever. And then okay. when you hit 60, you're, you just go... Pow. You're depressing me now. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't realize this. I don't know if you felt it as well. But apparently, from about the age of 25, everything starts giving out. Yes. Because you're, you stop... It's at that point that your body... Like, you stop growing, almost. If I've got that correct. Yes. So literally Especially for guys. So I'll stop regenerating. Especially for guys. You stop and about 25. At 25 is when you start to die. Yes. Yep. Very rapidly. I can tell you from personal experience, it's not 28 <laughs> for women. So it's no. basically at 25 is when you start getting two-day hangovers. You make that weird noise when you bend over. And get up out of chairs. Yeah. And everything is clicking. All the time. <laughs> I don't know what it is or what I've done, but my back clicks, my knees click, my fingers and my wrists and my elbows and my shoulders. I'm sure we have an audio somewhere of my shoulder clicking. Yeah. yeah. That was like, one of our episodes. My that neck was clicks terrifying. all the time. Even my toes are clicking. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So that just kind of made me go, what the fluff? Because you have this idea of when you're an adult, like you're an adult for a very, very long time. And then you're old. Nobody tells you that it's like a very sort of short burst in about from like 21 to 23 where you're like invincible. And then it just goes down. (laughs) That's basically what it is. And I was like, what is happening? My neck is still sore. It's Wednesday. Which fist was on Saturday? It's still sore. When I was 21, like... Oh, that would have been nothing. Nothing. That was like an afternoon Mm -hmm. that was done. I met you when you were 21. Yes. And I was invincible. So I was 19. So I was more invincible than you were. But you were still getting up at like 6 o'clock in the morning. Because I had 10 o'clock lectures because I was an idiot. Because I chose those ones. Yep. (laughs) And I used to walk there as well. Uphill for a whole year for no reason. Can't make me. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. And then last but not least, before we get to our international uh, caller. (laughs) All the way from Zimbabwe. All the way from Zimbabwe. Our international story. uh, Just one from South Africa is that domestic rhino horn trade has been legalized. What? Just in South Africa. Yes. This happened earlier in the month. That's not a good plan. No. So the Constitutional Court has ruled that rhino horns will be able to be bought and sold legally in South Africa for the first time in eight years. Apparently, the Department of Environmental Affairs has been uh, appealing against this for years now, since 2009. And yeah, they've made a final. It's now possible to legally sell rhino horn in South Africa. Obviously, the international trade is still it's still illegal. But yeah, a lot of people are saying that this is just going to increase poaching. 
Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they sort of endangered? Um, um, the country has their numbers are dwindling. Twenty thousand rhinos. That's not a lot of rhinos. No, that's not. Yeah, I know. Nine gag makes you think that there's only one left, and it's being surrounded by like armed guards twenty four seven. Well, I think it's not the case. sort of different like species because you know you get the black rhino and yeah. different. Yeah. So there might be eight of those left, but. Um, In general, rhino is not doing so good. Well, last year, there were 1,050 rhinos poached in South Africa. And the 2015, there were 1,175. So the official figures are going down. But the only reason why rhinos are being poached is for medicinal use in Asia. And we all know what I mean by medicinal use. Well, grow your own rhinos. Don't take ours. Grow your own rhinos. So, I mean, there have been, what's the word? Systems put in place to protect rhinos where people are cutting off their horns but not killing the rhinos so that the rhinos are still alive but then they just have these little stumps so that no, people don't but poach them. the thing is, is that I don't really care what your penis needs to get up. You're not going to cut off a rhino's horn to do it. They kind of need them. Yeah. To survive in the wild? I don't know if you know this fact. Well, 40% of the country's rhinos live on private game reserves. But still. Yeah. Because, just, you know, the penis trade in Asia needs a little bit of help. You got to come over here and cut off rhino horns. No. Fuck off. Yeah, no. It is a truly, like, fucked up situation. I honestly cannot think of one reason why legalizing, like, selling of horns is a good thing. The only thing that I could possibly think of is because it's legal, they can put more restraint on it. So if you legally want to purchase something, you got to jump through all these hoops yes, to try and get it. Yes, but it's only legal in this country. So what is, what is the point? Because it's just going to be illegally smuggled into Asia anyways. Th- that's what I don't get. That's the only thing that I could think of is that if it is legal, so like legalizing marijuana and stuff like that, you can put taxes on it and all these kind of different things. But as I said earlier, I don't care what your penis needs. Fuck off. <laughs> she says that to her boyfriend all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, those are our What the Fluff stories for today. And next up, we're going to be talking to our friend Darth Pixie. Woo! Woo. Uh, all the way in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe. Sorry, where is she? Zimbabwe. <laughs> in Zimbabwe to find out what story she has for us. Hey guys, so my What the Fluff story is from Slovenia, where a company, with the assistance of a computing professor from the University of Maribor, has created interactive tombstones. They're a new and pretty unique at this point way of celebrating the lives of the deceased in the 21st century. So these interactive tombstones are 48 inch screens capable of displaying scrolling text, pictures, and video files. There's also apparently a plan on the works to create a smartphone app that you can use to stream audio files from the tombstones. According to Reuters.com, these tombstones are pretty plain when no one is around. They display the name of the deceased along with dates of birth and death. However, if you stand in front of them for a few seconds, they, for lack of a better term, come to life and you get a display of digital content. It's pretty awesome. And another great thing about the tombstones is they're both weather and vandal proof. Unfortunately, the tombstones are also pretty pricey. You'll be set back about 3,000 euros. And after a pilot program of a sort at one of the cemeteries on the outskirts of Maribor, which is Slovenia's second largest city, there also seems to be a waiting list for the tombstones. So if you don't have the time or the funds to get that particular type of tombstone. There are other types of interactive tombstones that you could probably get. Some people a few years ago got the bright idea to etch QR codes onto tombstones so that when you scan them, you're taken to websites showing the biographies of the deceased, and you can even share links to those websites on social media. It definitely gives you a list of options, and it's something to think about. I know for a fact that, you know, when I inevitably kick the bucket, depending on how far interactive tombstone technology has advanced, I might want something that has, you know, a few holograms, maybe a smoke machine, get some eerie fog going, zombies shuffling out of the darkness, 
It would be pretty fun. I'd like to scare people when I'm dead. It would be really fun. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching I our have a pin. I have pineapple. Of what the fluff. I'm going to uh, go stitch Tan's mouth apple shut. Apple In a pineapple truly pen. what the fluff way. I'm going to cross stitch it shut. Mm. Pineapple. Mm. Pen, 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 pen. <laughs> But as always, guys, you can find the links to all of our social medias and things below. And yeah, we'll see you next time with more WTF stories. Okay, bye. Bye.